Good evening, Internet. Welcome to Top Shift 72. I'm quickly going to show you how I set up my phone so that uh, I can use it with the headsets. Uh, the first thing is to put your phone into aeroplane mode, uh, and then we go and connect the USB into the phone itself. Now, I always use USB tethering for this, so as I just go and get the appropriate connector, it's already plugged into the machine, so if you'll just give me a second while I plug that in and drop it. <laughs> so, once together, select USB tethering, select um, any of those options would work, and there we have it, it's now ready to, to go. That's it, you're ready to go, just put your handset into the headset. Now this is a new piece of software called Riftcat. Um, it works in a similar way as Trinus. Um, we have a, a piece of client software which uh, connects to your mobile phone uh, and then it's a simple matter of kicking off Steam VR and then Elite Dangerous and that's it. That's all you need to do in order to set Riftcat up. It takes less than two to three minutes. Now uh, I must admit, after all the faffing about and things like that, it, it was such a joy to set up. Now, obviously, there's two things to, to, to deal with here. The first one is the head look reset, which is uh, nice and simple. I'm going to set that to F11, just so that it works with uh, my uh, my voice attack. And then finally, you switch it into 3D mode, eventually and switch it through into the headset mode and that's it you are good to go now, this is me actually looking through my headset at the moment um, the one advantage that you've got on this one is that I don't have to split the screen or anything like that and as you can see we've got the SRV head tracking is a little wobbly uh, but, um, yeah, there's an eagle in the background, I can make out the menus, the SRV, everything seems good to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to run it through a test, uh, one of the training manuals, the, the training missions, probably the first one. So, here we go. Now the one downside I do have is at this moment I'm... I'm basically doing this by feel mostly because I can't read the text but that that's a good looking sign waiter there I must admit uh, just waiting for the thing to come up eventually oh anybody in there well hey, pilot do you read me this isn't too you bad like actually you got Well, the head tracking seems to work okay, as you've just seen. Um, yep, Eva can move the head from side to side. And okay, then we have it. Back up and running. Now, so I cannot make out a single thing here, now. unfortunately. You might want to check that your throttle's still working. Go ahead and set your throttle, Commander. Okay, set the throttle. Well, that's a result. Yeah, we might that's, just get this that's working. Bucket space worthy. Drone repair sequence is still running on your ship. You're lucky I had these things. They're not what you'd class as standard equipment. Your attitude control should now be active. See if you can pitch your ship up and down. Give it a go. That looks to be in working order. Let's see if we can get you rolling again. Okay, you should be able to give it a try now. Spin your ship on its central axis using your roll controls. Now, I didn't have to do any Good calibration job, with the head tracking. Just worked straight Yaw off the bat. Yeah. That's it, Commander. It would okay, appear so we now have a working sidewinder. I wouldn't take any chances, though, so you best get that ship into dock for repairs. There's an outpost nearby. See if you can make it there. Right then. Um, 
Okay, I'm having a little bit of trouble finding no where the outpost is. My name's Blaine. I'm something of a freelancer in these parts. You know, this could be a lucky break for both of us. I've been looking for a business partner. Someone to help me with potentially lucrative ventures. So, and yeah, the head tracking works. I can see the, uh... Show you the ropes, so to speak. I can I see the diamond back there without a problem. Help out strangers like this. So, I think you owe me one. The least you can do is buy me a lady and brandy. I'll <laughs> see you at the outpost, Commander. Right. Outpost, outpost. Ooh, getting a bit wobbly there. But, ooh, it settled down. So, yeah. This is passable. Um, you do get the, the proper sense, uh, depth of perception. It's not just like you've got a flat screen in front of your face. Um, head tracking is a little wobbly. And yeah, that's a massive asteroid there. That's really good. Um, it is a little frustrating because I know that um, I know that station is ahead of us, and uh, but I can't make it out too well. Now, Rifcat say that the the reason the graphics aren't this uh, this blocky is mostly due to uh, Frontier, and uh, as far as they're concerned, um, there's nothing more they can do. It's, it's basically in Frontiers court to to improve the uh, the graphics via the v, the steam vr method but um i must admit when you compared it to the old dk1 it's certainly a lot better and i don't have a spec that's uh on this machine which is good enough to handle a dk1 it's only got a gtx 6 uh, uh 760 so there's the outpost seems to be fine and we're done. Now Rifcat, um, I'm using the demo version here, Rifcat actually comes d in at about 15 to 16 euros so you know about 10 or 11, well it was 10 or 11 quid but you know circumstances. Uh, so it is good value for money especially if you want to show off what's capable of um, Elite Dangerous. I mean overall I mean, I've only just given you a taster here. I mean, this is a this is after about a couple of hours mucking about. I will say one thing: um, it is surprisingly it's so easy to s to set up. I was up and running. Yeah, five minutes. Phone in the headset. Headset set up using the Rifcat software. Steam VR in. It is on my face. Nothing more than that, and I really wish that <laughs> other VR solutions were that simple to set up. So you've got to take your hat off uh, uh, to Rifcat and to Steam VR for bringing these things all together. So yeah, I would say if you want to actually show off what it's uh, what VR is capable of on a budget, I, I'd say this is worth it. I mean, headset cost me fif 15 pounds, riff cap 15 pounds, so all, all in all the whole solution cost under 30 pounds I think, so that's worth it. So as I said, ease of setup quite good, graphics quality well that's really in, in Frontier's point, overall 16 out of 25 I think it's a, it's a worthy addition to uh, the VR solutions available to Elite Dangerous. Uh, thank you and good night.